Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Slot Car of the Month for January 2024. So, in January 2024, I purchased the Revo Slot Viper Hyde Park Edition. It's a beautiful car. It is an analog car, but it's a very high quality car. It does have an aluminum chassis, as you guys can see here, and uh, I did upgrade it with a chip Carrera chip to make it digital because I like to be able to change lanes. I do have two of these cars so that me and my friend can race. Um, the inspiration for buying this car was this Revo Slot Corvette. It's a um, C5R Corvette that I purchased over Christmas time and it, this was a kit. So I built this from a kit. The kits were cheaper than the actual cars. Um, I built this from a kit. I did do a um, Carrera digital chip in this as well. Also added lights to this car and lights to this car. I designed this car to, for my father uh, in honor of my father. My father was a longtime Caterpillar employee. He um, retired from Caterpillar and uh, he is currently uh, enjoying his retirement in uh, Las Vegas so I made this in honor of him uh, with the cat logos and it turned out really nice so I was very happy with the way this car ran but the problem is this is a no magnet car uh, this car does come with a magnet if you buy this car it comes with a magnet but I never could figure out a good place to put the magnet uh, the magnets on these Revo slots come with just a, like a sticky backing and you're supposed to stick it on there someplace but there's not a lot of place for it so um, I've been running this car as a non-magnet car and a lot of people race non-magnet cars. I'm not a big non-magnet racer. I like to race the magnet cars. Uh, some of my favorite cars on my track are magnet cars. But I really like uh, liked playing around with this non-magnet car, learning how to drive it and everything. So that kind of led to the purchase of my January car, this Revo Slot Viper, which is also a non-magnet car. And it... Um, and the problem is, is that when you run these non-magnet cars, it's like driving on ice. The cars fishtail all over the place, they slide, the, the wheels spin. Um, I have not experimented with putting some weight in these yet, but I actually plan to put some weight in these. But these are actually fairly heavy cars, comparatively. So, um, but this, the, the cars slide around and you cannot get the track time on these cars that you can on a Carrera car. I've got Carrera cars that just blow this car away and a lot of it has to do with the fact that the magnets keep it on the track. So in order to be able to race these cars with me and my buddy, I went ahead and bought the Viper at, to go along with the VET so that we can have Viper and VET races. I did convert both of these to digital and the one great thing about these Revo slots is that they are already pre derailed for the chip so they have a hole in there for the switch and they also have a hole in there for the uh, sensor that you need to put in there uh, neither one of these cars came with lights so both of these lights uh, receive lights from a donor uh, Carrera digital car and so they are both lighted I will run uh, run this one on the track so you guys can see it so you guys will get to see the the lights and everything but um, very simple upgrade to digital now I know that Revo slot has some smaller cars I think some some small Ford, maybe a Capris or some um, some other cars that are that are smaller in statue, and they do not have the pre-drilling on the bottom for the chip. So if you want to buy one of those, uh, be warned that they will not uh, have the pre-drilling for the chip. So you'll have to drill holes in there for the sensor and the switch if you want to put that in. But these larger cars, like the Vipers, the Corvettes, and I think also the uh, Porsches already have the holes in there for the chip and make it very easy to upgrade these to digital. I really like both of these cars. Now I will say that I I did build this from a kit. Um, this one came with a big giant wing for the back just like this one. Um, see how this has this large wing on the back? Put it here so you guys can see it. Well this wing is kind of a problem and it's kind of a problem on both cars. Let me tell you why because the wing actually sticks out past the end of the, the body line. 
Um, it's not a problem if the wing is within the body line, but with the wing sticking out past the body line, I have some barriers on my track, and with these cars being so swingy as they are, these will swing out and hit the barrier. So it was very easy on this Corvette, because since I built this from a kit, I just didn't put the wing on there. If I want to put the wing on for display, I just put it on there, and then when I'm racing it, I always take it off. And so when I bought this car, this car came from Evo Slot completely put together. Um, it had the wing on and unfortunately Revo Slot melts the wings on. Uh, what they do is on the inside they melt the bottom of it so that the wings are actually permanently attached. So I did have to remove this wing uh, because when I race this car I do take the wing off. It pops off here now. And I race it like this. This way I don't have to worry about this getting broken. I don't want this to get broken. I like the way it looks on the car, but I don't want to race it around the track at high speeds and have this snag on one of the outside barriers and um, get snapped off. I'd rather have it uh, just so that I could take it off. It was a little tricky to get off because they had melted it on. And when you put it back on, it doesn't go on as nicely as this one. This Corvette one, because it was never melted on, just snaps right down in there really nice. This one's a little less nice because I had to kind of force it off, but I will say that I like racing this car so much better without this big wing on, so you can take it off. Just be careful while you're taking it off. I'm running these on the stock tires that came with the cars and no weight at the present time, but I think eventually I may try to uh, maybe put some Paul Gage tires on these and put a little bit of weight in them to kind of maybe uh, settle them down a little bit, maybe be able to get some, some more um, uh, faster times out of them. But the nice thing is these cars are very well balanced. If you're racing these, they both have about the exact same lap times. So it is a very, very, very fun race because you're racing apples to apples. So, so here it is, my January car. I'll get some pictures of it running around the track. Um, but this is my January car for 2024, the Revo Slot. Viper, Hyde Park Edition, beautiful car, love the car, and um, I, I hope you guys enjoy seeing it as much as I enjoy driving it. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed watching the car race around the track. Um, like I said, these guys guys are very slippery. Uh, this is not for the faint of heart. It's very hard to keep these guys on the track, but it's very nice because they slide. They don't tend to roll over or fly off the track. So when they kind of get out of control, they kind of tend to stay on the track. They, they don't go flying off the table, which will happen with magnet cars. And when you're running a magnet car, if you're going too fast, and it breaks loose it can actually be a pretty violent accident where these things are always moving around on the track hope you enjoyed this uh, if you guys enjoyed this and you want to see next month's car make sure that you like and subscribe hit that notification bell so it notifies you when i put up the next video and the next video the february car should be coming fairly soon so um, i hope you're looking forward to it i am until i see you guys again happy racing